welcome back to the Citizen Channel, and today we have a little preview for you of a, yeah, a sort of important game. One of those games you either do hate or love, or everywhere in between, in all fairness. We're going to talk the derby, of course, aren't we? City against United at our place at 4.30pm. Kickoff on Sunday, the 6th of March. So we're going to have a look at what it means to both teams. Any ideas? My my prediction of City starting 11. Obviously, I'm doing this after the Peterborough game. So he give us a little bit of a clue to certain players who, who were sort of shoo-ins for this game, didn't he? Let, let's, uh, let's be truthful about it. So please join me as we look forward to City against United. Uh, that lot across the road, of course. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button. I try and inform and entertain as best I can on City past, present and forever, of course. All thumbs up are much appreciated and push that notification button as well. And tell your friends, please. Tell your friends who are City, City friends. Just, oh, do you, do you give Bernard a watch on, on the City's in channel? I, I try. As I try, I do, I do my best, and uh, a lot of people appreciate it. So a lot more, hopefully, can appreciate it going forward. That'd be brilliant. All right, let's talk about this game. Yeah, uh, broadcast on Sky, uh, Sky Sports main event here in the UK. Uh, Sky Sports Premier League and Sky Ultra HD. There you go, got none of those. So I'll have to be there, won't I? Which I will be, if you're there and you see me, come and say hello. Who's in charge? Well, yeah, I'm a bit worried about refs at the moment. Obviously, didn't go too bad against Peterborough, did it? But I'm, I'm thinking all this... Palava last week with Everton is, is going to have a knock-on effect on referees and we're going to have to play a little bit better than normal, which we probably always have to, to be honest with you, with uh, for City uh, to get something out of games. Because I think there'll be less, I know, I know they probably have tried to remain neutral, but it's only human psychology that means refs might make decisions that perhaps uh, next week that they wouldn't have made last week, depending on circumstances, and that they're all human. Well, sort of. Uh, so uh, you know, that's bound to happen. But we'll see, won't we? We'll see how this pans out. All we ever ask in these big... Big derby games, which they always are. Let's let, let's let's be straight about that. All they ever ask for is is that uh, the decisions are made fairly and the decisions don't ruin the game. That's all we ever can ask. Referee is Michael Oliver. So that's probably why I banged on a little bit, knowing he was the referee. Thirty-seven years old, Michael Oliver. Yeah, I thought he was a little bit older actually. He's refereed three hundred and twelve Premier League matches. Uh, before this clash, and he's taken charge of 31 games so far this season. So there's plenty of money in the bank this this season for him. 101 yellow cards and six reds, so that's that. 107, so yeah, about three and a half, three and a half a game. Uh, six red cards, that's a bit... That's a bit <laughs> Six red cards is a bit much. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, of course, he was last in charge of City back in November. The 2-1 went over West Ham at our place as well. His assistants is Lionel's Simon Bennett and Scott Ledger. I always think it's something to do with the accounting, that when I, when I see his name. Fourth official, Andy Madley. Yeah, he was obviously from refereeing duties for us. He's gone on to being fourth official. And on VAR, which has been quite interesting for City recently, I'll use the word interesting, Stuart Atwell. Of course, who took charge also of last Sunday's Carabao Cup final. I don't know how he did. I didn't watch it. I had no interest whatsoever. If, if we're not in our cup, our Carabao Cup, I don't want to know. I didn't want to know. So I have no idea how he did. Assistant VAR making the brews, making the coffee, making the tea, whichever is their preference, is Darren Camp. Previous meetings, well, last time out at uh, the Etihad, it wasn't great, was it? It's not been great last few times, has it? Uh, let, let, let's be straight about that one. Uh, 7th of March, 2021. City nil, United two. Yeah, I just had a quick look through my match notes, my match review notes, if you like, for the vlogs. Uh, it was always going to be tough, I said, when United go 1 0 up within two minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. A poor mistake by Jesus. Yeah, I think he was sort of in and around our box, wasn't he? I think he made an error uh, that led to the goal. Don't really want to see Jesus back there. He does cause more problems than he's worth, unfortunately. And it did stay like that till half time. And it, as always, at 1 0, and even at 2 0, the next goal is going to be very crucial. And within five minutes of the start of the second half, we'd hit the outside of the pulse for a Rodri effort. But Mr. Shaw, yes, Shaw himself had turned into the new Lionel Messi, if you remember. Um, uh, but sort of more or less created and finished off his own goal to make it 2 0. And we huffed and puffed. But well, that was it. We couldn't get back into the game. And that cut our lead at the top back to 11 points. So disappointing as any Derby defeat is, but not totally gutting because at the end of the day, we lost the battle. 
uh, but not the war. So let uh, say this could be this could be bad news for us, but not to do with United this time, wouldn't it? Overall record, yeah, not great, not great. We've got to improve this, and we've not been improving it the last few seasons. Pep certainly hasn't improved it for us. At our place, we played eighty-two times, won twenty-six and drawn twenty-five, but we lost thirty-one. I say, and some of that thirty-one, some of that thirty-one have come over the last few years. So we really need to up that when you when you obviously if you consider how good we have been the last ten years or so. 116 goals scored, 107 against. And of the last 17, the last 17, we've won seven, drawn two, and lost nine. So we've lost just as many as we've won and drawn. Not great, not great. And we all can say stats can please themselves. It's a totally different thing. But uh, you sometimes have to look at that with, with the apprehension. Please check out my little History Boys feature. I look back at a game on the 20th of March, 1993. I think the programme's up there on the wall. We're second placed United, second to Norwich City. Yeah, Norwich City were top of the league. And we try and dint their title ambitions. Although we did have a very, very long outside chance of Europe qualification ourselves in seven. But uh, yeah, very long, very long. Uh, Peter even more confident than we were. But please check out my little History Boys feature. I enjoy putting those together. It's great. They're only 10 or 12 minutes. And if you can... Give them a watch. It's uh, make an old man very happy. Odds to win the match, of course, when the fun stops. Stop, I don't ever condone gambling. And please check out my little odds show feature, which will be available before the game as well. Uh, two to five on for City, which is fair enough in a derby game. But these are interesting. The draws four to one, which is OK. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put my uh, sort of making money head on it. I mean, a draw at 4-1 to one and a United win at 15-2. to 15-2. to two. I mean, United fans, fill your boots. Uh, I wouldn't put anyone off the draw and United dutching it and uh, <laughs> you'll make some money there. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll end up with a City victory. But uh, interesting, interesting odds. So, and that'd be great. Please check out my odds show. There's some, some interesting stuff on there as well, I think. How will it pan out? Let's see how this is going to go. Ooh, I am confused about this game. I totally admit to you now. Not panicking over it. It's only football at the, you know, at the end of the day. It's you know, it's it's not life and death, is it? But obviously, certain managers wouldn't have agreed back in the day. Uh, let's be honest. Both teams come to this, and we're not really sure how they're going to play. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I mean, despite languishing nineteen points behind us. On the same games played, there's not much between the teams on current mixed form. Obviously, they were 19 points ahead, so we've been doing something right, haven't we? But obviously, on current, we're both having very, very mixed form. I'll sort of talk more about cities in a minute. Uh, though we are leading the league, we've not really fired recently. Uh, since Christmas, there's been glimpses of excellence, of course. We had a great control 1-0 win against Chelsea. And a, a nice four nil against Norwich, but it wasn't all smooth sailing, was it? And you know, other games like Brentford, we've never been convincing. And United themselves are a bit of an enigma, a bit of an enigma like us, uh, capable of picking up points. Of course, very hard to beat. They have lost games, but they're still very hard to beat. Uh, they, you know, they do turn defeats into draws and do do not turn draws into victories sometimes. But they they do get points on the board. But on the fact that they are very hard to beat and they're capable of killing a game in, in just a few minutes as well, as you saw from the Leeds game recently, where obviously they were pegged back. Uh, they thoroughly deserved to be winning, and then all of a sudden they were pegged back. But they just upped it, up that gear, didn't they? They went into a higher gear, which I always hope City do from time to time. But we're not sort of quite doing it. We keep missing. We keep we keep messing up with the clutch, don't we? At the moment, but they're certainly capable. United of killing the game just in a few minutes, and then just seeing the game out. We know they are. Like City United, you yeah, have striker problems. Ragnick's having, Ragnick's having a bit of moan about his striker problems. He, need, he needs one. And City, well, we get on without one, don't we, at the moment? That's that's how we play. Cavani's still a doubt, uh, but there's no change there. I think he's he's been in and out all season. I mean, he's about 52 years old anyway. Isn't it? It's no wonder, really, is it? But, yeah, he's he's been in and out. So United have coped without him and with him. So it's no big deal for United if he misses this one. The other one who probably will be back is the only other guy that's uh, got got injury problems is McTominay, which is who's been obviously I've not seen enough of him to comment, but <laughs> I've I've heard good things, I've heard bad things, but he's been a little bit ill apparently. But obviously they've had a they've had a they'll have a week between this and the, the last game they played. So obviously most of them, you know they've had the week on the training pitch. McTominay should be coming back in for this. 
in the league, of course, they, they're fourth at the moment, but Arsenal can go above them. I was reading the evening news articles the other day, and there's a lot of trepidation of the fact that Arsenal have three games in hand. They're only two points behind. They're playing reasonably well. So, you know, United could lose that wonderful fourth spot, which is what they're desperate for. Uh, absolutely, why not? I mean, it's so important, Champions League money, isn't it? Champions League football. So they do have three games in hand to catch up that two points. So they are in a, in a sort of precarious fourth spot just at the moment, apart from Arsenal. Obviously, Spurs can also take over United if they won their couple of games in hand. But uh, good luck with that one, Conte. I don't think uh, that, that, that's anything, anything to tell us that's going to happen. So if a victory, so victory, not a draw, is probably important to both of us, to City, and is equally so for United, just to guarantee that fourth spot. Obviously, it was devastating for us. It won't be great for them unless they get a victory. But it'll be interesting to see how Ragnick organises the team. He'll be tuned into how teams have been successful recently against City. Of course, he will. But with a lot riding on it. Could it be a stale draw as it was it last year at Old? Was it the nil-nil draw at Old Trafford? Was it last year or the year before? Where there was a lot riding on it, it just ended up as a stale nil-nil draw. Uh, possibilities of that—they are rare, but they do happen. And to be honest, a point for either team isn't isn't very good. It's not—it's no good for either of us. I don't sense United fans are as pessimistic about this as previous derbies, and uh, why why should they be? I don't think they should be. Uh, they have a team that would love to turn City over, despite the fact that it would hand the impetus back to their. They're so-called big enemies. Uh, you know, we obviously sometimes facts dispute that. Uh, Liverpool in the title race have stated they own, their own ambitions. If they're not winning the league. You know, obviously, they don't. But who do they want to win it? They want Liverpool to win it. They want City to win it. We're the lesser of two evils in theory, but that won't come into this game anyway. So again, for me, the key to this game is how Pep and City perform. As I said, one win, one draw, and five losses in the last seven matchups that the Etihad in all competitions isn't great, and it doesn't give you a lot of room for optimism. But they are stats; they can be, they can be good or bad, or just you know we start from scratch again. So it doesn't really mean anything. But obviously, it is a trend that City have to start putting putting away. I mean, we have a great record at Old Trafford, of course, but it doesn't help us at the Etihad. I did say at Christmas that we were well clear points wise. We'd not really got going yet, and I did warn you know, on not just this, not just this vlog, but other vlogs I was on, uh, international vlogs as well. That uh, if City actually found a little bit of form and moved up that one or two gears, I, th I thought we were lacking uh, when we were when we were points clear. Uh, the Premier League should be very very worried, but as yet we've hit March and we haven't still, for me, gone up that one or two extra gears. Uh, obviously. We still have a slight advantage in the league. That could dwindle to not a lot by the end of play against United. Doubts over Diaz for us, of course. Uh, hopefully this dead leg is not significant, but they can be. And I know when someone said about a dead leg, they can be a, a bit worse than people think. And apart from that, our main players are OK. Obviously, Aki's picked up an injury as well, but I wouldn't have ever seen Aki uh, playing in this derby game anyway. And we have to rely on, on Pep for once to get his tactics right at the Etihad against United. And they say he's not really proven or proven that he can do that in, in recent meetings. Although not anomaly, uh, though they are an anomaly themselves, we know they can hurt us. And as I say, they, I think Mr Ragnick will have a, a good long look at a couple of the games we've played recently where we've not done so well. So, what about my City eleven? I mean, this is assuming Diaz will not be fit. If Diaz is fit, he will start this game. I have no doubt whatsoever. And I think Diaz would start this game alongside Laporte because I think that's Pep's go-to pairing. Whether I want Stones to play, whether numerous City fans want Stones to play, it doesn't make any difference. That's what Pep prefers. But what I'll do, I'll do give you my eleven. So give us, give us at least um, one. One sort of kudos point if uh, we can, if I do get it out by one, and it, obviously Diaz is playing because he's fit. Because as a, I'm recording this, I have no idea. So I'm assuming Diaz, 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 who's Diaz? Diaz won't be fit for this. Eh? That's a new pronunciation. I've done that one before, guys. So yeah, I'm assuming Diaz won't be fit. Uh, Walker, surely, surely, surely will be back in for this. Please, United's pace, etc. Certain. You know, uh, Walker has to play, surely. I think Gundogan might miss out in this one. Won't be surprised to see him. 
Pep will stick with Sterling. Uh, let's hope he's flying. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the team out in a minute. A little comment on Sterling and a gentleman called Mares as well against United. Uh, we, there could be problem Again, stats. Stats it is a worry. It doesn't mean anything in the face of it, but it is a worry. So Pep, I think, will bring back Sterling. So I'm hoping he'll be up for this. He's had a bit of a rest, hasn't he? So this is my 11 without Diaz, of course. Edison, Walker, Stones, Laporte, Cancelo, Rodri. I think that more or less picks itself, don't you guys? Rodri, KDB, Bernardo, Foden, Mares, and yeah, Mares and Sterling. But I'll be honest with you, they have shocking. We'll go all in the quirky stats in a moment. We'll go over their stats, but they have shocking uh, actual performance stats against United. So if both of those are playing, they're going to have to sort of go against the grain and improve vastly on what they've done before. But I think Pep will go for that. I don't think people like Jesus have, have done enough in that Peterborough game. Grealish scored a goal. Is he going to put him back in it? Actually, I think Grealish would be good against United. Don't get me I think he'd play really well. I would love to see Grealish in there if uh, you look at the stats on Sterling and Mares and he doesn't fancy one of those two. But how can you, how could you leave Mares out? Anyway, let's let's talk about that. So that's my 11. Let me know what you think uh, about my 11 and let me know your 11 or any changes you'd make to that, allowing for any injuries, etc. that I'm not aware of. So let's go on to the quirky stats. We'll have a couple. Of, I think there are a couple. I'm sure I left them in on uh, Mares and Sterling. I've probably not done that now. I've said that. But uh, let's have a look at the quirky stats for this derby match. United are looking to win four consecutive away games in all competitions against City for the first time since a run of four between November 1993 and 2000. Let's hope they don't do that. Uh, Premier League meetings between City and United have seen the away team win more often than in any other fixture in the competition's history, 21 times. Let's hope that doesn't end up as 22. Only against Chelsea, 18, and Liverpool, 17, have United lost more Premier League games than they have against City, 16. Let's hope we all we equal Liverpool. Despite City not playing in five, not playing in five different campaigns of the competition, so that, that, that bodes well. That's a good stat for us. That's the first good stat I've read. United are unbeaten in eight Premier League games, the longest current run without defeat in the competition. Won four, drawn four. They've opened the score in seven of these eight games, with the other finishing nil-nil. In his managerial career, City's boss Pep has lost more home games against United in all competitions than he has in versus any other opponent. That's four, and we also lost a, lost a cup game as well, didn't we? Although it, was a, it didn't matter in the end. Here we go. Cities, oh yeah, I have, I have included them. Cities Riyad Mahrez has been involved in nine goals in his last eight Premier League appearances. So good so far, that one. Scoring six and assisting three. Excellent. However, there's always a boat, isn't there? However, against no side as he faced more in the competition without scoring than Manchester United 11 times. <laughs> So he has to put an end to that stat if he plays. Uh, I say stats are stats, but it's a worry, guys. Worry for me. I mean, I like my stats, as you know. And uh, Raheem Sterling, yeah, let's have a look at his little stats. He's still yet to score in 18 Premier League appearances against Manchester United. There are six other opponents Sterling has failed to score against in the competition, facing them 16 times in total combined. Indeed, the last Englishman to score for City in this fixture was James Milder in April 2013. I'm sure Mr Foden might have something to do with that, and Grealish if he gets a game, etc, etc. Yeah. So as I said, Mares and Sterling, on the basis of form, will be in this, could be in Pep's team. But they're going to have to stop. They're going to have to stop the rot as far as the quirky stats and the stats are concerned, guys. Let, let's hope they can. Eh? Let me know your thoughts anyway on this. I say it's it will be a for the neutral. I think this will be a great game for the City fan and United fan. Probably not. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But as I said, I'm still left a little, even even looking into it and looking at things. I'm still left a little bit confused as to this one. But it's nice to see the United fans a little bit more confident. I think uh, this year, which is good because hopefully we can knock that confidence off them and, and knock it out of them and actually win this game. So fingers crossed. I won't I won't, I won't predict a score. I'm not going to do that. I don't do that on the odd show. But please tune into the odd show. Give me, you'll get a feel for where I'm going with this game anyway. 
and please tune back in for the full match report here on the Citizen Channel. And I will try to do it Saturday evening, but obviously I have no idea what time I'll be getting home or whatever, what the circumstances are. So hopefully Saturday evening, at the latest, of course, it'll be Sunday morning. So please push that notification button and join me for the match report. Saturday evening or Sunday. If it's late Saturday evening, of course, if you're all in bed by the time I get it out, it'll be there Sunday morning for you anyway. So hopefully a happy night. Uh, Say nothing, nothing worse is than losing a derby, and there'll be nothing worse than drawing a derby either this week because the draw is absolutely no use to us, no use to them, really. I don't think but so. Let, let's hope for a, a positive uh, for us. Uh, I don't care about them, let's, uh, that, 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 that's the truth of it. I'm a city fan, that's <laughs> all that matters. And please uh, say tune in for those match reports and the match review news ratings of course and please check out the odd show and my history show I say if you can do that and spread the word anyway thanks for watching what are you going to do yesterday have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families more importantly let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the citizen channel i only ask one thing don't i well a couple of things but one mainly stay safe blues come on city thanks for watching bye for now